Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So I used to watch a lot of makeup videos, but now it all seems to be coloring. So why not combine the two? For this video, I'm influenced by an eyeshadow tutorial and I'll be using eyeshadows for my look. I'll be coloring in the book Desert Wonderland by Rachel Reinhardt. I don't have many books in my collection with full page faces. This book has mostly desert plants with a few faces in it, and I liked this one for its large face and closed eyes. Perfect to create a fun eyeshadow look. I have two large eyeshadow palettes. One is my daughter's, so between all these colors, I should be able to recreate the look. The video tutorial I'm following along with is from the channel Kinsey Mac Brown. The video is titled ColourPop Frozen 2 Eyeshadow Tutorial. I picked it because it reminds me of a desert sunset. Before I start the eyes, I'm going to do the skin tone. I'm using Pan Pastels and this soft tool to apply. And I'm going to put a piece of paper, a little bit larger than the page, uh, behind the surface I'm working with. And I'm just going to zoom up a little bit closer for you. As I'm moving through this process, I'm thinking of how I apply my own makeup with a foundation and highlighter, bronzer, and blush. So I'm going to start by picking up some of this yellow tone and I'm going to rub it off on this larger sponge here. And this is just kind of used as a color palette. Um, I'm going to take majority of the color off, maybe add a little bit of white. Um, and that way, when I first apply it to the page, it's not as intense. It's just like your own makeup. You always want to start light and then get darker if you need. Uh, it's easier to apply more than to take away. These pan pastels go on super smooth and they're really easy to blend. I'm gonna build up this yellow tone first, and then I'll go in with the, the darker colors and build up the shadows and highlights. For this brown shade, I'm just going to add it as if I were doing a bronzer. So along the forehead, along the edges of your face, and then around the jawline. That's going to help define your cheek. And then around the nose, just to give it some shadow along that ridge line. And I just want a little bit of this blush pink color for the tops of her cheeks.
So I noticed I was a little bit heavy handed with that bronzer color on this side. So no big deal. I'm going to take my kneadable eraser and I'm just going to press it onto that pigment and pick some of it up. And then I'll go back and just kind of blend everything together. But I want to make sure she's got a nice highlight on her um, tops of her cheeks. Taking that same eraser, I'm just going to go through and uh, clean up some of the edges and around the face. All right, this is my problem when I do faces. I tend to nitpick and uh, fuss over things too much. So yeah, now I'm taking my electric eraser and just again cleaning up the edges. It's a good idea to have a clean brush, that way you can wipe off some of the excess dust that falls around. Okay, on to the eyes. I'm going to be following along the tutorial. She's going to be using an eyeshadow brush. I'm going to be using a sponge applicator. Eyeshadows are similar to chalk pastels, but the, the eyeshadow brushes just weren't holding the pigment onto the paper, so the sponge applicator will help kind of press that into the paper a little bit better. These are beautiful. I'm so obsessed with these. I think they're great. We're taking the shade Win to Start, and we're taking that on a fluffy brush. So this is a Morphe M433 brush. I'm paying up a generous amount on that brush, and I'm going to start right in the upper portion of my eye. Again, if you touch your eye, it's just right where your brow bone starts, so kind of right in this area. So starting off light because I want the majority of the pigment to be right in that little area, and then when there's less pigment on the brush, that's when I'm going to start to blending it outwards. And I'm just very lightly touching my eye. If I turn to the side, you can see the pressure I'm using. It's not very intense. It's like barely touching my eyeball when I am blending this out. And you can always go in later and build up this color more. Okay, so I'm going to continue better, on this bright eye here. And just almost the same technique that she's using, that placing it out. in that outer corner and out. just working like. um, into that crease. Pressing it into the paper and blending as I go. mauve color and it's in the bottom left hand corner of the palette. I'm basically going to place that in a little more concentrated area but basically in the same spot, kind of in the outer upper portion of your eye. And I'm just using this color to create more depth and they look beautiful together. Even though there's like purples in this palette, I feel like they're not that cool toned and they work together really nicely with the browns. So with this, I'm just going back and forth. I'm not really blending it outwards because I really want to build up that color in a more concentrated area. I'm also, again, going back into the palette a couple different times to really build up that color. Breeze it is one of the darkest colors in the palette. It's that really deep purple shade. And I'm going to use that right in the outer corner of my eye. I'm also using a different brush for this step. I'm using the Morphe M506 brush. As you can see, it's a little bit, basically the same shape as the last one, but just smaller. So first, just like tapping into that. There's a lot of pigment on my brush. And then I'm just going to really lightly start working that in the outer eye. So as you can see, there is a lot of pigment. So I am being very careful. I'm almost more pressing this in first to build up the pigment before I go and blend it out. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but when you want to build a pigment, it's better to just tap it on and press it in rather than sweeping it. If you sweep it, it's going to diffuse the color. So if you feel like you got too much, it's okay to kind of work with it more and build it up. But if you want something to be pigmented, see how that's definitely more diffused now. I'll go back in and again tap that on. Okay, so here again, I'm just going in this other eye and really doing what she's doing, kind of tapping it in there right in that section. corner so area like and then on. blending it out into that more orangey shade and into more of the eyelid also, but concentrating it on that lash line and into the corner. Okay, blending just a little bit into the crease. I don't have a lot of pigment on the, the applicator, um, but that way it just gives it a little bit more depth. 
and I'm just popping that right on. Okay, the gold I had did not want to stick to the paper. So what I'm doing is adding a little bit of um, a bright yellow for the gold in the inner corner of the lid. And then I can go through and add the the gold shimmer eyeshadow on, on top of the, the yellow. It just helps brighten it up. So we're gonna take this yellow about halfway, a little bit over halfway on the eyelid. And then again, I'll just kind of go back and forth between this yellow color and that gold shimmer color. opinion so once we put down the earth shade we're going to go in with the venture also i don't think i mentioned it but this is the earth shade and then this is all right the so this color was really giving me a hard time it's a more of a mauvey pink color uh, but it had a lot of shimmer to it and it just would not stick to the page it seemed like the more i was trying to press it in with the sponge applicator the more it was lifting up so um, I eventually go and find a different color, more of a, a mauve purple color that didn't have any shimmer to it. And that seemed to lay on the page a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, I tried to um, press it in there. I tried to use my finger to dab it in there and it just would not stick. So it's always good to play around and, you know, you learn by trial and error. This color works much better, stays on the page, and I can blend it up into the other colors. All right, going in with some of that dark purple again, I'm just going to retouch that up and define that area a little bit more. Now I am using an eyeshadow brush here. It's a very small, dense brush, and I found a very magenta shade, so I'm just going to go over that into the crease a little bit and add some more of that magenta color that wouldn't stick on. Again, this isn't a shimmery color. It's more of a, a flat, so it's sticking a little bit better into the shade water here in person it looks a little bit lighter than it does on camera um, it's a beautiful periwinkle color I'll be using the shade water and I'll also be using the shade spin dripped as well and I'm picking that up on the thrive cosmetics brush this is just an eyeliner smudge brush which is perfect for under the eye it's very dense and helps get a lot of pigment so picking it's up hard to tell first, here but I did find that periwinkle color water. and I'm just going down I below really that lash line as tight to the water line as Possible. And then taking some more of that first color that we used, kind of a more orangey color, and just um, touching up some of that that got lost in the blending. Okay, I am going to take my yellow pencil again and just reapply some yellow to brighten that gold up before the next step. First amount of this. So then from there, what I'm going to do is just put that on right in the middle like that. Press it on. And then once there is less glitter, that's when I'm going to move it outside of that center area. But as you can see, once I put it on, it doesn't really move a whole lot. So that's when I'm picking up a little bit more on the brush. Just kind of fade that towards the inner corner. I'm not going all the way into the inner corner. I'll go a little bit outside of that into the purple as well. I really don't For the want gold to go glitter look, crease. I'm using gold stickles. I'm trying to keep Just the squeeze a little bit out and then dab with your finger. All right, check to see if that's dry. 
and I'm gonna take a black Prismacolor and I'm just going to thicken up this eyeliner line. I'm gonna extend her lashes a little bit, so I'm gonna take a fine tip Sharpie, and I'm practicing over here on the side, sorry, you can't see very well, and it's almost like a plucking motion. So you start right at the lash line, and you push hard and then lift up and out. So think about plucking your eyebrows. Okay, there's the completed eye look. So for the lips, I'm going to start with my darkest color, and I'm just going to add some shadows and depth here with this darker color. So right on the edges and the inner corners. And then I'll take my medium kind of blush pink tone, and I'm leaving the centers of the lips the, the highlight. So I'm working around there. Going back and blending in a little bit more of that darker tone. And again, just going back and forth between my mid-tone and that darker tone, blending it out. My highlight, I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow inside there. I want some nice warm tones for her lips. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the video now. This is basically just straightforward coloring, adding some shadows and highlights. Um, we're gonna start with her headband, and I wanted a warm, almost terracotta, coppery color uh, for her headband. So I'm starting with the darker color first, adding my shadows, um, blending it out to the middle so it's lighter at that midpoint. And then I'll add my mid-tones, again, going over my dark, blending to that lighter color. And then using this blush for my kind of all over blending, I can go back into these tighter areas with the darker and mid-tones. And then I'm gonna take a yellow just to add a kind of a sunlit glow. So same technique for this upper part of her headband. All right, I wanted to warm up her lips and give it a little bit more depth, so I'm adding a darker magenta color in the corners there and around the edge. All right, working on my cactus flowers now. They're going to be mostly yellow with some orange shadows. And I'm taking this yellow uh, coloring most of the petals. I'm leaving the very tips, uh, the top tips, white, and those can be my highlights. Then I'm taking a more golden yellow and I'm just adding, building up those shadow areas, the darker areas, to make it a little bit more dimensional.
Okay, now I have a uh, yellow orange color and again I'm just I'm gonna keep building um, the bottom areas a little bit darker and darker and inside the center of the flower I want that to be dark inside there and this is just a white Prisma color it's gonna help blend in some of those colors Okay, now a little bit darker orange again just going into that base of the flower in the little creases trying to figure out where the darkest part would be and then taking that first yellow and just blending all those together Okay, I went ahead and did the rest of the flowers. There were a couple flowers that didn't quite match the, the shape of the other ones, um, but I'm still gonna keep them in the same kind of color family. Although instead of orange um, for the darker areas, I did a more darker green color. And this I'm taking a darker brown and I'm really just wanting more contrast between the shadows and the highlights. So I'm taking the brown and just, um, just at the very base of the flowers and in some of the little creases and on the inside of the flower, just so it has a little bit more contrast. All right, for my greenery, I'm gonna be using some more olive shades and then a grayish green. So for this little stem that's poking up, um, I started with my lightest olive green first, worked it up on both sides, leaving the very top white as my highlight, and then coming in with that darker olive green, um, and then just concentrating the color more on the sides. And then blending it all in with a very light kind of minty green color. For these little leaves that are coming out of the flower, I'm going to be using that dark, more hunter green or olive green color. And I'm doing it at the base and at the very tip. So start dark and light pressure towards the middle. And then I'll take my lighter olive green color and that will be the highlight area. And I was thinking it was looking a little too on the yellow side. So I'm just taking a um, mint color green or like a grayish green and going over all of that. And that will help tone down the yellowness. And then after I tone it down, then I'm going to be taking a darker green and just going over again. It's just to help create more depth, more contrast between the shadow and the highlight. So right there at the base and then at the very tips. Sometimes, especially when you're working with uh, greenery, a lot of leaves and foliage, it might be hard to tell what shape goes with what. I was having a hard time, you know, trying to determine if some of this was hair, headband, or leaves. So my tip is just to start off with what you do know, what it is, um, and, then, and then you can kind of decide once other things are colored, things might make more sense. All right, I'm gonna finish up all the greens for you and start the cactus. So the cactus I am, well, for the whole picture, I'm kind of using this color palette as my guide with the yellow and orange flowers and then these dark teal uh, cactus. I started with my darkest shade first, uh, or the dark teal shade first, I'll say, cause I am gonna be using a dark blue for more shadow effect. 
Um, and then I do a really light highlight where I want that highlight to be. And then I work my way back and forth between the mid-tones, uh, the darker tones, and then the lighter tones. So the lighter tones I help just to keep for um, blending all those colors together. And then just to kind of brighten up some areas and add a little bit more color variation, I'm gonna use this um, more green tone than more blue-green. Um, and again, that just helps add some more color variation in these. And then here's that darker blue. Uh, it's more of like a royal blue, but that's just gonna help um, add a little bit more shadow effect. All right, so I went ahead and did the other cactus, and now I'm gonna start the hair. So the hair is, um, oh, I don't know. I'm just um, not always that good with hair. It's a little tricky to figure out where your highlights are gonna be, especially when you have a lot of curves and turns in your hair, trying to get you know exactly where those highlights are gonna be. But I'm starting with my darkest color. It's just a nice, rich, warm brown tone. And I'm just gonna go through and add the areas where I know I want the darkest um, places to be. And then I'm gonna take this kind of khaki color and uh, just add it in between and then kind of going up into that first color. This is a nice warm uh, reddish brown color. And I'm gonna go over that first color um, where the darkest areas are, and then I blend that a little bit more into the lightest color. So when I'm coloring hair, the texture, I'm starting it off more of, I know it's not a brush, but more like single brush strokes, um, instead of like a back and forth motion, like what you would do for blending. Um, and that way you get more of these like streaks and hair texture. Um, when I start to blend more with the lighter shades, and I'm going to use kind of a golden color too to help um, with the color tone of the hair. Um, then I do more of a back and forth motion when I'm more blending. Uh, when I take these darker shades, that's when I'm going to do more of a single stroke. Um, that way you get the texture. And you just kind of have to play with it. If you want um, her hair to be lighter, then you're going to have more highlight showing. Um, if you want it darker, uh, like I, at first I was thinking this was looking too light. So I just went over um, really, really lightly in those highlight areas, just so it's not so yellow. You get a little bit more of the warmer tones of the browns if you just really lightly brush over the highlight areas, but still keeping it where you can see the highlights. So I'm gonna do this section for you, and then I'll fast forward through the rest of it. All right, so I finished the rest of the hair, and now I'm on to this little shape here that I couldn't quite determine exactly what it was. I'm thinking it's a part of her headband, so I'm using that um, kind of pinkish terracotta color and then a dark gray to fill that in because it is underneath this flower and these leaves, so it's not gonna be very pigmented. Um, and that way it can kind of help blend in between the hair and her headband and the leaves because again, I wasn't exactly sure what that shape was supposed to be a part of. All right, just gonna cast a little bit of shadow in this black and white stripe piece of her headband. So a darker gray along the bottom, and then I have kind of a, a lighter blue at the top. And then I'm also taking this black, and I'm gonna go through all the little dots in this cactus, except I'm not filling it in completely. It might be hard to tell on camera. I'm just making kind of little U shapes or C shapes inside each of that, those circles. So not filling them in completely, but just so they have some depth to them. So a little dark on one side and then it's light on the other side.
Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more dark brown to her eyebrows just to fill that in, and then a little pink to her cheeks, and we are just about done. Okay, here it is, my complete page. I normally don't gravitate towards coloring people, but this was a lot of fun using that eyeshadow tutorial as my guide. So whether you are doing your makeup or coloring in a book, you know that the same techniques can be used for both. I want to thank Mackenzie for the use of her video tutorial, so please go check her out and happy coloring!